The coming lecture is on the surgical manifestation of Bilhar's disease in children. The following pictures are taken from the country site of Egypt simply to let you know how the infestation of Bilharzis occurs. That is, children bathing in the canals on the countryside of Egypt. That is how they move from one part to the other along the cart wheels. That is how they irrigate the fields and that picture is very really illustrative because it shows the children, the mothers, how they clean their utensils in the canal and as well rejecting themselves to the possibility of um, having Bilhar's Jesus. This slide shows a diagram to illustrate the life cycle of schistomyces. And to make it simple, we'll start by urination and defecation of a patient having schistomyces, active form of schistomyces. Now, if the affection is in the intestinal tract, the ova that will pass is called schistosoma mansoni. If it is affecting the urinary tract, the ova will be called hematobium. Now, there is difference in the shape of these two ova. In Mansunai, it has got a side spine, and in Hemtobium, this is a, a central spine. Now, the eggs should pass in fresh water, stagnant fresh water. And after some time, it's going to hatch, releasing what we called the Mirasidium. The Mirasidium running in the water, searching for a snail, penetrates the snail to mature in what we call the cercaria. The cercaria leaves the snail and swim in the water searching for the human being. It is attracted by the husking of the human being and when it reaches to the surface, to the skin, the cercaria penetrates the skin, loses its tail and starts its uh, journey in the circulation from the venous circulation to the right side of the heart from the right side of the heart to the lungs from the lungs to the left side of the heart and then from the left side it is pumped to all parts of the body when it reaches any organ usually or mostly it perished disappears except those which reach the uh, liver. In the liver, the uh, cercaria matures into adult worms, male and females. After maturation in the porta hepatis, they start traveling along the portal vein anti-stream until they reach the fine venules 
of the large gut usually, or they reach to the venous plexus around the urinary bladder. When these fine venules it reached, the male leaves the female because the uh, male has got the larger size, but the female is cylinder and it can go through the fine venules of the, rec the colon or the urinary bladder deposit and starts to deposit the ova. For example, if it is, if it reaches the colon, the position of the ova occurs in the different layers of the colon, that is submucosa, muscularis mucosa, and some uh, subserous uh, serosa. If it reaches to the urinary bladder, it goes to the wall, especially the submucosa of the urinary bladder. This slide shows a male adult schistosoma and the with its gynecophoric canal and the female is resting in the gynophoric canal before traveling along the portal vein anti stream. This slide shows Schistomasis in children causing complication in relation to the urinary tract. In the kidneys, <coughs> it shows calcification of the capsule, possible stone formation, and together with this is infection that is in the kidney and the ureter. Stricture ureter, especially the lower one-third of the ureter and especially the intramural part of the ureter. So uh, as you see, ureteritis calcinosa, ureteritis pseudocalcinosis, punctate bladder calcification, vesicoureteric reflux infection and stone formation. In the urinary bladder, it causes ulcers of the bladder, either acute or chronic, bladder neck obstruction, contracted bladder, clot retention, and it is considered as a precancerous condition in the urinary bladder. Now, affection of the endocrine gland in cases of schistomiasis is either through the direct route and this is negligible through over deposition either in the pancreas testicle or supraglenal cortex or it is an indirect route when it affects the nutrition or when there is a hepatic involvement and uh, uh, schistomiasis with the possibility of uh, hepatic fibrosis and affection of the liver function. That is an analysis of 100 cases of bilharziasis or schistomiasis in children. In these 100 cases we had hepatosplenomegaly 76, colorectal lesions 24, that is a typical case of affection in children having huge ascites, hepatic fibrosis, huge splenomegaly, and ascites. Another picture, a third one, you can observe the outline of the spleen, how it is, uh, hand breaths below the costal margin. Now, if we, are, if we are going to encounter a case of schistomasis in, child, in a child, what's the battery of investigation we're going to do? Recently, we 
may use laparoscopy just to, to define the fibrosis of the liver and this is a typical picture taken by laparoscopy to the hopnail liver affecting this is another more clear picture showing the nodules in the liver due to deposition of the ova in the sinusoids that is the laparoscope showing the enlarged spleen so as we said hepatomegaly in 76 cases it was mild in nine cases moderate in 56 and severe in 11. now with these 76 cases there was 45 cases alone but varices occurred in eight hyperspinalism in eight urological lesions in seven core pulmonary in two and ascites in two another battery of investigation is sigmoidoscopy searching for polyps as you can see polyps occurred pedunculated polyps occurred in 10 sessile in 8 and cauliflower in 6 the urogenital legion 7 urinary bladder granuloma in 2 urinary bladder calcification in 1 bullous cystitis 1 bladder neck obstruction 1 stone 1 stricture 1 and the following x-ray shows the calcification of the urinary bladder stone in the pelvis and in the lower one third of the ureter calcification of the urinary bladder once more with uh, structure of the ureter and hydronephrotic changes affecting both sides together with the stone in the pelvis that is a granuloma plain x-ray showing the granuloma calcified granuloma of the urinary bladder now this is a sigmoidoscope showing a pedunculated uh, polyp this is another pedunculated polyp, a close-up for the pedunculated polyp, and this one is a sessile polyp. Now, this is a piece of rectum excised for the presence of what we call bilharzal mass, and bilharzal mass is affection of the colon in the all the layers, starting from the submucosa, the muscular mucosa and the subserosa causing fibrosis in all these layers and this produces what we call the bilharzal mass characteristically this bilharzal mass does not obstruct because the mucous membrane is full of polyps and uh, the uh, fibrosis is not a tight fibrosis that occur in the wall this is a specimen showing the mucous membrane of the piece of colon excised showing the multiple polyps due to schistomyces another close up you can see the polyps is a sile and pedunculated and you can see the mucous membrane affected by hyperemia and inflammation all this is due to the position of the bilharzal ova now this slide shows the radiological investigation findings in cases with bilharzal hepatic fibrosis with the urinary troubles positive finding 16 calcification of the bladder 12 calcification of the urinary bladder with involvement of the ureteric movement in three 
bladder calcification one with hepatic with hydronephrosis one ureteric involvement one and nodular filling defect no pathological lesions in 26 that is a picture by a cystoscope showing calcification in the wall of the urinary bladder and this is showing granuloma of the huge garden of the urinary bladder another picture cystoscope showing a huge granuloma of the urinary bladder a fiery granuloma with affection of the mucous membrane another granuloma another granuloma and calcification that is obstruction of the bladder neck and you can see the knife trying to overcome this obstruction among the investigation required for these cases is splenoportography that is uh, important to see whether the presence or absence of uh, thrombosis of the portal vein and this is especially uh, before operations and also to see whether the condition is associated with uh, oesophageal structure or not. As you can see it here, the portal vein is patent. Another x-ray, splenoportography showing the venous pattern and there is no affection by oesophageal varices in these cases. Splenoportography and with, as you can see, split, uh, spilling of the dye at the puncture in the spleen. Another splenoportography. Now, these cases might be associated with portal hypertension, and in our cases, hypertension, portal hypertension was present in. 14 cases with 7 bleeders. Thank you.